What you are watching is called internal keyway broaching. Now to show you a better view of this, we actually filmed through our spindle so you can see every single pass slowly peel off stock to create the perfect key shape. How does this work and why should you care? Well, the reason why you should care is because if you ever need to make anything like a gearbox, like I did in my last video, you're gonna have to key your pinion to your gear. If they're not keyed, they will spin. You could see the keyways are spinning around each other, no problem. If you line up those two things and you put a key in there, obviously you'll cut the keyway off. You don't have it sticking out like that, but they're going to spin with each other. So we have to get the shape in there to make our gearbox. My pinion was easy. I could just drop in with an end mill and I could put that slot in there, no problem. That's not hard at all. But with our gear, I'm sure you can see this. If I try to take an end mill right now and run it through this keyway, I'm not gonna have any luck. I mean, it's pretty obvious. That isn't gonna work. So luckily, Horn hooked us up with their internal keyway broaching tool. You can see the tool is slightly stepping up in X. It's actually only going up one thousandths. And then in Z, it's moving at 275 inches a minute to peel that stock off. So all the flakes you're seeing come off of this tool are actually only one thousandths of material per pass. Everything you've seen so far in this video was ran on brass, and that's because I wanted to make sure I got the machining footage, right? We can run brass, it's easy to cut. But I have some 17.4, so the speeds and feeds and all this depth of cut stuff I did, that's actually to run on 17.4. So let's throw some 17.4 in there and see if it breaks or not. Now we still have brass in our sub spindle, okay? But there's one thing about my setup that's technically wrong that I want to show you. Now this tool from Horn has like the most clever engineering and it's cooling through, it's literally perfect, right? But when machining on a sub spindle, you gotta be careful because look, I got the coolant on now and take a look at this. Can you see this? All the coolant and chips are going into my sub spindle. Now I have my ejector and everything taken out because we had to film through it, but normally there'd be something blocking that. So if you ran it like this, you'd fill your entire sub spindle up with chips. And that's a pretty guaranteed way to make the machine stop working eventually. You can't fill your sub spindle up with chips. So that is the best through coolant design I've ever seen. But if you're running this tool on a sub spindle, use the through coolant of the sub spindle to get the chips out of the sub spindle. I just said sub spindle six times, I'm sorry. But yes, use the coolant through the sub spindle to get the chips out. That's very, very important when running production machining. I used this when I was running these gears on Tyson's SMX because you can't fit that in a Swiss machine. And when I was running on his SMX, I was using the through coolant of the horn tool and it worked incredibly well. That's our last brass piece, no more excuses. Time to run 17.4. <laughs> Look at that GoPro shot. For all you people who comment, why no coolant? We can't even film how bad the shot looks inside the machine from the outside of the machine. <laughs> Coolant's off, we're gonna do our pickoff. All right, you ready to see if this works? Should be able to hear in my microphone a pretty good crunch. This doesn't work. Go up to the ID boy. All right, next up. When you want to know what sucks about being a machinist at this moment, I can't turn this down. It's either going to be a crunch or success. Sounds good though, I think we're good. So we can actually go to position, head to, we can go over to monitor, take a look at our Z-axis load. Now the high jump is going to be the retract when the machine rapids, it uses a lot of force. But the feed looks like it's at like 25%. It doesn't even, it doesn't even look like it's phasing it. It doesn't even look like it's, it's just going right through that. Okay, wait for the coolant to turn off. All right. So for my first attempt, so there's like a little lines in there. I am feeding fast, I could probably slow it down. But pick that off. Here's the entry, looks great. The exit had a little bit of a burr, but hey, that's good in my book, man. That actually did a phenomenal job. I'm actually incredibly happy with that. So yeah, now you know, it works on 17.4. That's it. Now, if I were programming this when I was younger, 
I would write one pass and copy and paste it like a hundred times and then adjust every single depth of cut manually. But the new me knows macros. And I'm sorry that every video has a dry erase board in it full of math and macros. I'm sorry, I just can't help it. Anywho, so because we're going to loop something over and over and over, I decided to use a while statement. A while statement's the easiest way to make this simple. So with every macro, like I've said a hundred times in this channel, you need to start with what you know. Well, what do we know? We know we're gonna have an end position. We know we're gonna have a start position. We know we're gonna have a depth of cut, and that's it. The next variable I'm gonna do right here, that's just a reset, and you're gonna understand that in just a second. Actually, I'll explain it right now. When we do this counter, when we figure this out, if you don't reset your counter, then the next time the machine runs, it's just gonna skip all this because the counter is gonna be full. So we need to reset the counter before we run this every single time. Don't know how I was gonna put that off, but yeah, that's how that works. So what are we looking at here? Well, here's the while statement. And over here to make things a little bit simpler, I wrote everything out in red without any pound variables. This is the first, second, third, fourth, and fifth pass. Now it's gonna do like a hundred passes, but I didn't wanna write a hundred passes because that would be a gigantic amount of space. So I just did five. But the first time this runs, it's gonna equal 625. And at the end, it's gonna say 625 equals itself plus 2,000. So it's gonna equal itself plus 2,000. The second time, it's gonna be 627. It's gonna equal itself plus 2,000. Third time, fourth time, fifth time. It's just gonna count all the way up until it is either greater than or equal to 795. Sorry, I had to double check that. So it is gonna say while 603 is less than 600. So once 603 becomes either equal or greater, this do one will jump right down to this end one. And then we're gonna do our finish pass. That's why down here I use a different X than 603. I go to X of pound 600, which is my X end. And then I do another feed rate. Now I could have done my finish pass in this while statement, but the reason why I didn't wanna do that is because your finish pass is the one that really matters, right? That's what's gonna determine your surface finish. And just in case if I had to, I wanted to be able to adjust my feed rate on my finish pass. So down here, I did my finish pass under it. Now, if I did less than or equal to, it would run the finish pass in this loop, but I didn't like that because I want to go fast for all the roughing because that doesn't matter. And on that last pass, I can really slow down and skim it smoothly to make it look as good as possible. I haven't had to do that yet, but I just knew that might be a problem. So that's why I wrote it this way. So if you're doing any keyway broaching, you can copy this macro right here and it should work on pretty much any machine. If your machine doesn't have pound 600s, then use pound 100s. If it doesn't have that, use pound 500s. If it doesn't have that, sorry, I'm really sorry. I will comment this macro down in the comments down below. We will pin it for you. So if you don't wanna write this down and copy this, just copy my comment down below. And while you're down in the comments, make sure you also hit like and subscribe. That's it for our video today. See ya. Thank you.